What's good, YouTube? It's Mirrorboy Squid back in. Let's talk about Dragons for a second, because Dragon Link is one of the popular decks that are very annoying. It's not going away anytime soon. It's been around forever, just evolving upon iterations and iterations. And recently, they're taking advantage of the Bestial Friends, which allows them to make maximum usage of Magnemut, search any of their dragons in their deck, and continue to loop off and either combo or play it as a control deck that makes use of the cards like Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Spears, which is easily made with two dragons, and they also heavily rely on the Bistio engine as well as the Spell and Traps, so Branded Beast, which allows them during the main phase to tribute a dragon monster and pop a card that their opponent controls while they control Bistio monster, and also Branded Regain, which is even more annoying because this card just gives them infinite advantage. Each time a light or dark monster is banished, they can shuffle it back and then draw a card. So each time that they banish something with a Bistio, they're going to be able to draw a card, and on top of that, during their opponent its turn if their opponent normal or special summons a monster, you, they can target one Bistio monster in the graveyard and special summon it. So they're going to be able to loop Bistio Magnum over and over. And it's almost like a, a control deck in the aspect where they're just gaining advantage. They're whittling down your resources with things like Branded Beast as well as their other powerful links. They can also establish some Omni Negates in the form of Bistio Dissipator, which can actually be revived off of Regain when special summoned correctly. And also traditional dragon monsters like Burrow and Dragon, which we all know is kind of like an annoying pseudo towers like monster, which really is hard to deal with, especially with N Engine because it's unaffected by a lot of monster effects. It can't be targeted, obviously, by monster effects. So you kind of have to leverage with your non engine cards in order to get rid of this. And it's just compounded. It's really, really hard. Sometimes they can also put up like a Baron. They get infinite searches off of the regain plus magma combo. And it's just very, very annoying. So without further ado, let's talk about some of the hand traps that you guys can use to beat this deck. Uh, Ash Blossom, I think. There are a lot of different things that you can hit. One card that I love hitting is actually Chaos Space because this card is a very powerful starter. It allows them to tap into their baby dragon, so like the Wyvern Burster and the uh, Collapse Serpent. And then being able to get access to that immediately is obviously very detrimental because they're able to snowball resources. They draw a card off Chaos Space. They get multiple bodies off of the Wyvern Burster because they're able to shuffle back whatever they banished with Chaos Space. And then they essentially get three monsters for the price of one card. So it can be very, very annoying. I would say definitely Ash that. Alternatively, you also want to Ash uh, some high impact cards that allows them to tap into the babies as well. So like the Safert is something that I would definitely ash. Things you don't really want to ash are like the Magnemite effect, obviously, because you're just wasting resources. But one valid card that I could see you also ashing if it's your first play is also Pistol Lubellion, because this guarantees that they get access to the Magnemite, which means at least a plus two because they're going to be able to search in the end phase, right? So just watching out for key things to ash there. Alternatively, like if your deck had deal with the Branded Beast pop, you might consider like just, uh, hitting some of their the, the cards that allow them to get access to that. So like Lubellion is one of the cards that allows them to place the Branded Beast onto the table. And then with the effect of Serenor, they're actually able to send the other card, which is Branded Regain. And during the end phase, Branded Beast allows them to place that back on the table. So in a rare circumstance, if you can't really deal with like the regain gaining infinite resources, then you might even ash the Serenor send from deck. But generally you want to ash like their high impact engine cards, so things like the Safer, things that give them access to the baby dragons, and uh, yeah, you could also Ash the Ravine in certain circumstances where you see something coming, for example, a Chaos Dragon Levy in there, if they already have Safer in their graveyard, and you feel that you know, they could really threaten your board with the pop two off Levinar and they might be trying to send it off Rabin. Just recognizing like what they're trying to do with their deck is really important to know when to Ash beyond those heavy engine cards that we just talked about. Nibiru is decent against this deck, but you have to understand that this deck has a couple of iterations. There are the more bestial heavy control versions, which Nibiru is a lot worse against. Against the traditional heavy Dragon Link package, for example, the one that won the, or got second at the French Nationals rather, I think that Nibiru could have some leverage against it because they're typically going for like a heavier end board, things like the Boro End Dragon that we previously noted upon, and also trying to summon out the Bestial Dissipator as well. So Nib is decent against that, uh, that type of deck where it's like less control and more kind of combo heavy. It's just one thing to note is that their Heretic Seal, the Heavenly Spears, they typically summon this first. So when this is tributed by Nibiru, they're able to summon a dragon from their hand or the deck. So typically they can go into more plays with Safert or with like a Magnemut and then get the search. So it's not like the end of the world if they get nibbed. But if it's a combo heavy, 
variant and you have Nibiru in your side deck, this is definitely a good card that you could use to whittle down the resources, guarantee that they're not gonna be able to put up multiple Omni Negates. So like just guaranteeing that Borowin doesn't hit the field makes life a lot better for you as a player on the crackback to break the board when they don't have like the Borowin trying to negate your stuff and also being untargetable by monster effects. That's kind of annoying. If you're playing a Kastira or any Shifter deck, obviously Shifter's amazing against this deck. It's heavily reliant on the graveyard. So Dragon Ravine, obviously all their Bistios, Banishing here and there. Just know that Dimension Shifter is a dark type, so if they have any Bistio, they're gonna be able to, in your end phase, activate the effect to banish the Shifter, and then they get a body on board. So just be aware of that. And then from there, they can also just normal summon like a level four and make something like Chaos Angel, which could also threaten your board even under Shifter, right? So Chaos Angel requiring a Light and a Dark, which are Bistios are Darks, and if they have like a Seyfert or any level four, they can normal summon, it just gets both effects where it's unaffected and also cannot be destroyed by battle. So just be aware of Chaos Angel on the crackback. Troll Knockbird is pretty bad against this deck, to be honest with you. I just feel like, well, it depends. Against a combo heavy deck, it could get some value because you're stopping them from searching a lot and that could impede their progress. But I find that the deck typically still is able to put up some form of Omni Negate. And then if they use Bistial Lubellion as their first interaction, for example, they can still place the Branded Beast onto the table with the follow-up Bistial that they searched and then they distribute that to summon back Lubellion. So they place this from the deck. So they're still gonna have interrupts and you're gonna be down a card. So you really have to weigh and determine whether or not this card is worth it. I think it's definitely a lot better paired with other cards, a lot more non-engine or other hand traps, and just ways to play through like the Branded Beast and potentially a Baron or a Dispater. So just a heads up on this, I don't recommend this card as your first pick, but it could be decent against the combo heavy variant of Dragon Link. For Ghost Mourner, Infinite Impermanence and Effect Veiler, you wanna hit cards that are cycling them towards their Omni Negates. So when they're trying to make the Borowind Dragon, typically they're gonna have to use a Triple Burst Dragon as well as a Guard Dragon Pisty that points in the same column. So what you could actually do is use the Veiler on something like a Guard Dragon Pisty just to prevent them from doing that. If you're playing like Castira where you only have one monster and you have to push that through, you could even Veiler or Mourner or Imperm something like a Lubellion so they cannot place the Branded Beast on the table, right? Because you're scared of that one pop. You kind of have to resolve your field spell or you have to resolve your Fenrir or whatnot. So if you're really scared of that trap specifically, then you could choose to actually use it on the Lubellion. But otherwise, I typically like using it on things that allow them to get into Baron, allow them to get into like their Boron Dragon, things that are a lot more uh, Omni Negates and like uh, Dicey to deal with. So just recognize the signs of when they're going for that and just negate the key card, the key choke point that would allow them to sequence their links and link climb or synchro climb into the designated Omni Negate monster that they're trying to achieve. Ghost Bell is not, it's okay. It's really mid against the deck I find because you can obviously stop the Bistios, but they're still gonna have it right in their hands. So they're still gonna be able to use it. There are not a lot of good cards to hit. You could also hit a safe bird effect that's trying to recurse a larger dragon from their graveyard, but for the most part, it doesn't really do a lot. You could also hit the branded regain, targeting something, but these are all like beneficial effects for them. They're already free pluses. It's not like they're expending a card to do all of this. Even safer in the graveyard means that they've already used it initially, so it's just chilling in their graveyard with a secondary effect. So you guys don't want to negate, you guys don't want to go neg with your own hand traps uh, as a one for one and go negative one on that interaction, right? Because you're not even stopping something that's super, super crazy. So that's why I'm not a huge fan of Ghost Spell. And DD Crow is also kind of mid, but even still, I feel like Crow would be a little better than Mourner because you're actually getting rid of the target. You're getting rid of like the Magnum that's just chilling there in Grave, which they can keep bringing back with Branded Regain. So it's just important to uh, hit some of those cards. It's decent in that aspect, but I still don't think it's like ultra good that it would be your first pick against a deck like this. Another card that I've kind of wanted to see more play, but it's really hard to fit into a lot of side decks nowadays is actually Fantastical Dragon Phantasme. So they do a lot of links, obviously, if they're going for like the Triple Burst Dragon at some point, I think they even might have two or three links. So dropping a Phantasme at that moment will allow you to draw the three or four cards and fix your hand, which is really, really powerful. And on top of all of that, it has the effect where it negates any card that targets a monster you control by discarding a card. So things like Branded Beast, this, answers it automatically after hitting, fixing your hand and getting that free plus one body in the form of Phantasme. So I actually think this card could be very, very good against dragons if dragons start picking up steam. And if you're playing Bistios, which are already a good side deck card against dragons themselves because they're all light and dark, so you can actually use Magnemut to search the Phantasme in the end phase because it happens to be a dragon, right? So like 
on the follow-up turn, it could have some uh, usage in the grind game. So I, I actually quite like this card. I know there's not a lot of space nowadays, especially because Cash Care is the best deck and it's kind of like a deck to beat. So it doesn't really make sense side decking Fantastico Dragon Phantasmae over a lot of other cards. But if you have a deck that has a lot of free side deck space or if the metagame kind of ramps up where there are a lot more link decks, then this could be a number one option, I think, for the deck uh, to be sided against. Another honorable mention is actually Fallen of Albaz. This is more specifically tailored towards branded decks, but Fallen of Albaz is a dragon monster that you can actually set against a board of dragons like Heretic Seal and Dissipator and Contact Fuse into Abilenidus, which a lot of players have actually forgotten about. This is like a Chimera tech for dragons. It requires one Fallen of Albaz plus one or more dragon monsters, so you can actually Contact Fuse instantly using your opponent's monsters as well. So it's kind of neat that you can just set a Fallen of Albaz, which I previously got wrong in one of my older videos, but people corrected me that you cannot bounce sets with Heretic Seal of the Heavenly Spears. So setting a Fallen of Albaz, often their only interaction is gonna be the branded beast to target a card and destroy it, right? So you can kind of set this and then instantly contact Fuse using your opponent's dragon monster's entire board, even things like Boral End Dragon that would be normally very nasty and hard to get rid of, and then go into an Alba Lenitus that can attack multiple times based on how many materials that you used for its fusion summon. So it's very, very, very cool interaction there if you're playing Branded. I would definitely see if you can include or at least side Alba Lenitus. In addition to being a good send-off Mirror Jade, it's just an option to out their entire board. And then, of course, board breakers are very, very important. Triple Tactics Talent is almost always live against this deck because they have a lot of Omni Negates, a lot of things that would be used in the main phase. Even them using Branded Regain to bring back a Magnemut, they're still going to trigger the effect on the summon, obviously. That's a no-brainer. So that just plays into tactics as well, or Thrust. So it allows you to crack their board by stealing, attempting to steal something, or drawing more cards, which I really, really like. So obviously, if your deck is already playing Thrust and or Talents, these are some good picks for you. Dark Rulers, decent. It's better against a combo heavy variant, again, when they have multiple Omni Gates, but you still have to deal with what they have in their hand, so like the hand traps, and then you have to deal with, of course, the Branded Beast, and of course, the Branded Regain getting them a bunch of resources, so it can be kind of annoying. On top of all of that, they also have Bistiel's probably follow up in their hand, so if they have something like a Druus Worm, they can summon the Druus Worm, tribute that with a Branded Beast, and then pop something, and on a new chain, the Druus Worm will have the effect to send one of your special summon monsters to the graveyard. So that's just something to be aware of. Dark Ruler is not by any means a blanket wipe against this deck. They have a lot of hidden effects that they can trigger. Even things like Valdrake, a lot of people forget that this has a secondary effect where you contribute a light or dark monster and target one special summon monster that was special summoned by your opponent. So like a Ritual, Fusion, Synchro, XYZ, or Link, and then banish it. So it's like... They have a lot of hidden effects that are very annoying, so just beware about that. But Dark Ruler can be useful if they have at least two Omnigates, so you're getting like a two for one, right? Even if they have Herag Seal, like and a Baron, getting that two for one can still creep you ahead of the game. And then obviously using your other non-engine or engine to start playing through their cards. It's always good to have two for one in the form of one card because we're only playing with six cards, right? And that's not including hand traps. If our opponent has multiple negates, we have to whittle it down and get a lot of two for one so we can climb back and then break their board, but also guarantee that they're not able to break our board on the crack deck because they're getting a lot of it resources off of regain plus Magnemut, right? So just something to be aware of. And then, Absolutely, my number one pick, I think, against this deck going second is uh, Spell and Trap Removal, okay? A lot of people underestimate how important Spell and Trap Removal is against this deck. They feel like it's a heavy combo deck. But guys, they're getting, like, infinite advantage off of Branded Beast plus Branded Regain. These are cards that you absolutely have to destroy. If you're playing the grind game against this deck, you're probably going to lose because Magnemut is just so powerful. They're able to, uh, at any dragon in their deck, they're able to use them as fodder to pop your cards. They're able to bring back the Magnemut over and over and over again, going to the link plays. So Cosmic Cyclone and Harpy's Feather Duster are absolute staples against this deck, in my opinion, because you absolutely have to get rid of the Regain. You have to get rid of the Branded Beast, and you just have to like make sure that these cards do not stay on the table for more than one turn because the more and more they bring back the Magnemut, the more and more you're going to suffer because they're just going to get infinite resources. And that's not even saying if they have Bistil Dispater in their graveyard, they can also bring this back, which allows them to shuffle back stuff to negate or destroy cards. Or on their turn, better yet, they can special back their banished uh, light or dark monsters, or even your banished light or dark monsters. So it's absolutely crucial that we get rid of Branded Regained and Branded Beast. These are just a very annoying cards. Just remember to use Cosmic Cyclone on Beast when Regained is in the graveyard because Beast can actually use the effect in the end phase to place a 
Brandon did continue his Spiral Trap in their graveyard face up on their field. So after playing against this deck, I realized like this deck is very, very heavily centered around Branded Beast and Branded Regains. So guys, make sure you have cards that can pop this. Even things like Pankratops as a one for one to get rid of the Branded Beast is very, very good as well, or being a pseudo interaction against their turn and 2600 to boot that you can attack into the Heretic Seals and try and bait it out. So yeah, that's about all I had for the video. If you guys have any more comments about how we can actually beat this deck because I think it's going to be a powerful contender in the WCQ. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments below. Other than that, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.